Are your kitchen and bathroom way overdue for a remodel? Well, I got the guy for you. Call John Sellers at First Response Contracting, 484-256-7136. Both residential and commercial services, and he's licensed and insured. Call him at 484-256-7136, First Response Contracting. Hello, this is Brad Wiseman. You're listening to Real Estate and You. We are back in the studio, or should I say down in the dungeon, right, Hugo? It's kind of like a dungeon (laughs) down here. There's no windows, no nothing, but somehow we end up down here. So uh, we have a guest here today that I'm very, very curious about uh, having on here because I have to say I don't know a whole lot about his what he does, but I see him a lot. His name is Jack Gombach, and um, he's a government affairs consultant for McNeese Strategic Solutions Group, MSSG. It almost sounds like that thing you're not supposed to eat, MSG, right? <laughs> you just add an extra S to it, is that right? An extra S, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for being here, man. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Oh, no problem, man. This is great. I see you around a lot. You're always around openings of things, government things, uh, you know, fundraisers, all these things. So... What tell me what a government affairs consultant is? Yeah, well, let's talk about the firm first. Yeah, let's talk about the firm. So, uh, MSSG yeah. is part of the law firm McNeese, uh, Wallace and Nurek. Okay, of Harrisburg. Okay, they have offices in Ohio, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, wow. Lancaster, big company, Devon, and um, down in Maryland. Wow. So, our team is comprised of about. Oh, we keep adding more, um, about a dozen or so professionals, okay. um, all with different backgrounds, all related back to government affairs. And, and they really started this to better serve clients. Gotcha. And over the years, that's really expanded to its own sort of standalone entity, supporting everybody from the small nonprofit yeah. to some of the big, massive corporate players, uh, running around in Harrisburg. And when you say supporting, you mean supporting them in a way that you are bringing them to the political arena or bringing politics or, or helping the politicians see that they need something? Yeah. So it's, it's really about helping the way I see it is, is helping our clients okay. um, engage and work better and more effectively with government. Okay. And that can mean that's not easy. It's not easy. And it's get, it's not easy in today's environment. Um, but the great what, because is, Republicans, Democrats hate each other. Is that why <laughs> is that could that be the reason why it's, it's tough to do? I don't know. You know, a little bit, you know, a yeah. little bit. But, but what's great is our clients have great stories to tell. Yeah. And our job is actually easy because all we're doing is telling their stories gotcha. and, and working with agencies and elected officials to help understand the impact of these organizations in their community and why they need support. Yeah. Why they need support. So how. How long does it take to convince a politician that what to do or how to help your clients? So it, it really kind of depends on the client and then and then what are we really working towards? Gotcha. Right? So, so like a nonprofit would be like grants. Yeah. So, you know, we do some work with um, nonprofits, helping them navigate the grant space and, and working with the agency. So we really sit down with our clients and, and really try to get an understanding of the work that they do. Gotcha. And really try to get a, a feel for their impact and really make that case to the agency, the elected official. Mm-hmm. This is how your support and tax dollars is going to support their mission, their organization, and really have an impact. Yeah. And and it's also about continued support, right? So making sure that they don't just help one year, but multiple years. Now, when you say support, that means money. It can mean a bunch of different things. So it okay. can mean money. It can just mean letters. Uh, like okay. officials write letters a lot uh, in support of, of projects. Uh, but yeah, brass tax, it's money. Yeah, it's that's what access I thought. To capital. Amazing, amazing. So are, are you effective at this? I mean, you, do you think you, you're good uh, at this? I, I, I know I am. You know you are. Very good. <laughs> he's very he's very confident. Very confident. I love that. So, so a day-to-day thing would be meeting with your clients and, and yeah. saying, what what can I help you with? What can I do? Yeah, and, so and then our, you go find the places to find, like grants. You're going to go find the money from some type of a government program or something like that. Yeah, so our days uh, as a team start early. So we have a very team-focused approach. So we all have clients that we're responsible for. But mm-hmm. in every, it feels like, you know, first thing in the morning, very early, we all get on a quick huddle and we just talk about, 
all right, what, what do we have this week? What do we need help with? Um, what are our goals? And, and we kind of have that. And then from there, it's it's all bets are off. Yeah. It's okay. You know, we have a client and they are looking to secure X grant, whatever grant. Yeah. It becomes working with the client to get us information, testimonials, stories, scheduling tour. So bringing elected officials down from Harrisburg uh, and tour these facilities. And then something that we're starting to do now, getting ready for the legislative session in the fall, getting our clients to Harrisburg. Got it. Um, so I'm getting them there and making the pitch, you know, on their home turf. Um, so is it, is it, constantly. is it better to get the client in front of them directly instead of just you? Always. Right. Always, always. It's like anything, they're, right? It's like, yeah, they're, they're the best storyteller. Yeah. And, and, um, I find in those instances, it's really good because their passion really mm-hmm. goes through. Right? Absolutely. And, and they're able to really tell stories and get engaged and talk about you know, their mission and their impact and the lives that they're changing. So I'm, I'm very excited and very honored to kind of be part of that process and to help them because it really is a privilege to work with some of these organizations. What's the most challenging part of your, of your job? The most challenging part is probably the most exciting part for me. And that's every day is different. And Mm. just because you have a plan at the start of your day doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, Something's not going to happen. Right. So, and what, what's the quote? Everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. Right? So that happens a lot. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one. That's I a new like, one. I think it's like Mike Tyson. I don't quote. think getting punched in the face is fun. Well, if you're Mike Tyson, right? Yeah, Mike Tyson. Yeah, it's true. He'll just bite your ear off that. Right. I mean, yeah, that's what happens. So, yeah, so that's the challenging part then. For So what is what, what do you love to do with your job? What's the best part? I mean, you're at every social event. In fact, you kind of remind me. Do you remember Mike Opaque, obviously? Yeah. yeah. Mike Opaque, I swear. Uh, Hugo, you don't remember him, do you? Yeah. He was a politician no. here locally who was in politics for a very long time. I had the privilege of knowing him and meeting him and being in his office up in up in Harrisburg. And obviously he's passed since then. But I swear, I used to say that they, there was a clone of the guy because I would go to one event go to another event and he was there before I got to the next <laughs> event. I'd be like, it's, it, how does he do this? I mean, I, I never understood how he, he was probably the best politician that I've ever met. There's some of those politicians who just have it down to an art. Yeah. They, just, they know when to leave events. They know when to show up. They know. Oh, they yeah. Know. He would sneak out and then sneak back into yeah. another one. Yeah. They know all the entrances and exits and how to get it, in and out. It's there. incredible. So I, that's, that's giving him a, a compliment. You know, <laughs> uh, he was an amazing guy. So I kind of see you doing that. You, you're a lot yeah, of different I'm, places I'm, and that's part of your job. You're schmoozing. You're, you're making relationships. You're networking. You're, you're building rapport constantly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, I think the other part is there's so much going on in our community to be excited about that I want to be at these events, right? I want to be at these functions and support people when they're starting their dreams. And that's, that's really what those ribbon cuttings and and things are. It's, it's people taking all these plans and their savings and starting their dreams. And and I want to be supportive and and be a resource as much as I can. And whether that's professionally through the firm and, and helping them, you know, get access to capital to grow their business or just showing up and buying a cup of coffee or something and, and being, you know, a patron. Have you ever thought about doing, and I don't know if this is what you did before or not. Have you ever thought about like being on a campaign, like actually helping somebody get voted in? Yeah. So I've, that was most of my career. That was, was most of your career. Of Cause career. you used to, you had your own company it was a political consulting firm, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So is that, that's what you did? Yeah. So we did, um, politics mm-hmm. and, um, managed candidates, uh, pretty much at every state. So you manage candidates though. When you say manage candidates, that's kind of funny because, you know, I think the Republican debate that was on uh, a couple you know, weeks ago, whatever it was, um, they they needed some management. There was yelling and everything else. Now, would you if you were in a situation like that, would you be backstage and then yeah. telling them, hey, that you're a little harsh or you're, you're not doing so well or it's not being received well? Debates are interesting. And so, so yeah, we would, you were around with debates and stuff like that. Very active in a lot of debates. Wow. There's a lot of negotiation that goes into debates. Yeah. um, Especially behind the scenes, behind the scenes before we even get to that, right. There's a lot of prep and there's a lot of getting ready and there's a lot of negotiations, speaking time, who speaks first, blah, 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 blah. blah. Who's, who's even allowed to be in the room during the debate. Who's allowed to be in the room. Oh, that's a huge, that's a huge thing. Interesting. Like the, like the audience. How many guests. Yeah. All that stuff. Wow. Well, you know, what's funny about that. And this is where I love the show because we can go off on different tangents and things because I'm very curious. Um, But what's interesting about that, they always say, know your audience. Yeah. So if you know who's in your audience, you can, you know what you're playing to. Yeah. Look, so the the strategy, right, is you want as much as, as many of your people in the room during the debate as possible. So every time you give a zinger, yeah, all your people go nuts. And then from the audience watching, all you hear are cheers and whatever. So they, right. People often don't know who's 
they think everybody supports the person. Right. Yeah. So, so it's d- an optics thing. It's a dance. Yeah. So you think you would ever get back into that again or no? Do you like um, that? That sounds fun. So it is, it is fun. And it again, sounds a lot like, more fun than what you're doing now. Just so you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being completely honest, Jack. Maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, so they're, you know, he's I, like, he's like amazing. Like, he's like, I can't believe he just said that. Yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> um, I loved politics. Yeah, I loved so I. for many reasons. Yeah. Um, but you know, for me, politics was always a means to an end, right? The end gotcha. should always be governing. Yeah, you get a little fun antics, yeah. and, but it's all about governing and doing the right thing. Absolutely. So I ran candidates pretty much at every level. So I did some statewide awesome. work, some local stuff. Um, I did was involved in some projects nationally, which were really cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and was really getting to a point where I had to kind of decide, okay, this is no longer just like a little fun hobby where I make some money on the side. It's It's... Am I going to take this to the next level? Yeah. And just sort of found myself in a different position yeah. in life and said, totally going to go back to Pennsylvania. And, and well, that's what you yeah. said too. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you, uh, you came here from New York, mm-hmm. right? Uh, upstate New York. We yeah. call, we're <laughs> going to call We're going to call that upstate New York. And you, um, you got here, uh, you were going to go somewhere else yeah. and you ended up at Albright. Yeah. So like, how does a guy from New York end up at Albright? So, during that whole point of, you know, looking at colleges and friends are applying, I was all about Drew University and I was right. going to apply to Drew. I was going to get into Drew. That was the plan. Um, so I met with my guidance counselor and he said, Jack, you got to apply for more schools. And I said, well, why? Why? Because in case you get turned down, right? Didn't even cross my mind. That wasn't even a pop. I'm going. So to you're that positive. That's good. Was, you have a I good was, positive. That's right. You're in one direction. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. So, good for you. And then I get, do it for me. Yep. Let's print out a list of colleges and let's find one that, that, Fits. Right. So he prints out this list of schools and I look at the list and I'm like, <laughs> AL, Albright, reading Pennsylvania. <laughs> it was the first one because yeah, it, it starts like, with an A. It was, it was right up there. I was like, <laughs> this is why they, they, the companies will say ABC roofing. It's because <laughs> yeah. years ago and you go through the phone it book, works. it was it the works. first thing. That's it hilarious. Works. That's hilarious. And I was like, uh, this one. This looks good. This reading. Yeah, reading. Re- I think it's on, the, it's on the Monopoly board, right? Let's, let's go there. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. So end up getting waitlisted at Drew, get accepted into Albright, and we're in the kitchen. And my dad's like, I I guess we got to go take a tour. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I think we do. Since they accepted you and the other place yeah. is waiting. And it was, was kind of like, a, oh. so we, we go down there and, and I take one step on campus. Yeah. And I mean, it's a cool spot. Wrote. And I, yeah. I felt at home. It was amazing. I loved my courses. I loved the it's professors. It's a good school. I met all my friends there and, and it just, it, it was right. It was the yeah. right place, right time. And, and I love the college. I'm still an av, you know, strong advocate for yeah, it. Yeah. And, yeah. Good for you. And then, then you met your, your, um, your not white the time wife, but you met your wife then? Yeah. So, so we, we met at Albright, didn't start dating until after college. And then, um, one thing led to another and now and we're, now we're married. married and we're getting ready to, you know, honeymoon and all that. Fun oh, stuff. cool. That's awesome, man. Very cool. So let's go back into the government stuff. All right. So where do you see this going for yourself? Like, do you think you're going to stay in this realm now that you're with uh, the MSSG? I mean, do you think this is what your, your plan is to do, or do you have aspirations to do something that's even, uh, you know, more, more than that? So for me, it's, it's all about impact okay. um, and, and doing the most good. And, you know, I ran for County treasurer a couple of years ago mm-hmm. Um, really saw that office, and I still do, is a very important under-the-radar office in county government, very passionate about finances and, and making sure that things are um, running smoothly. And, yeah. and so, so, and then before that, I was the council president of West Reading. Yeah. So for me, it's just about impact, right, and doing the most good and serving the most people. Um, I will say since that race, since running for county treasurer, um, I've taken a more broad view of what that means. And if you had talked to me a couple of years ago, I would have said, you know, the ultimate form of service is public service and being an elected official. Right. Because you are, you know, you have earned the trust of the public and, and they are elevating you to this position to serve the greater community. Mm-hmm. Now I'm taking a much more, because of my work with MSSG, a more broad view of what does that look like? What does service look like? Mm-hmm. What does impact look like? Okay. Yeah. So run for something else again at some point? I'll never rule it out. 
Okay. Um, typical political um, answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, typical. Oh, typical. my God. Oh. I'll never rule it out. It is, that's, that's just such but it, a... But, you know, and, and I've had offers... And I'll, or I'm not going to say it here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should use the eight ball. It. Are you going to run for any kind of office yeah. again? We'll do that later. But um, but so seriously, you, you you might do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved running. Um, running countywide was amazing. It's a huge county. Um, yeah, it's a very diverse county. Very much, and I really enjoy just having very frank and honest conversations yeah. with people in Hamburg, and then you know the next hour later we're down in Kumru, right? So just kind of zipping yeah. around talking to people. Yeah, but I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Good, I'm being able to help nonprofits and companies and people think differently about government. Everybody's yes. very jaded, and, yes. and I'm able to say, no, no, like we can get this yeah. done. This is not impossible. It's not the movies. It's not the, like we can do this. Yeah. Being able to help them tell their stories is, yeah. is important. So you're, you're seeing the good side of politics. See, allow oh, we, we, what we see, uh, you know, in, in the um, public yeah. is obviously through the lens of the media. Yeah. And we see always the bad parts of politics. So you're saying that when you get into the inner workings and you're in Harrisburg or you're you're actually in the ditches up there, it's not as it people actually do get along. They yeah. actually do work together. Yeah. Which is a good thing to hear. You know, I, it's something that's really good to hear because we all think it's doom and gloom in, in Harrisburg or in, in Washington or whatever. So you're saying it's not like that always. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think people like to fixate on the bad, the doom, the gloom, yeah. and it sells. And it's, you know, I think it's very in vogue, right? To yeah. when people talk about the city, talk about all the bad stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Unfortunately, that overshadows a lot of the good that's going on. And, and I tell people, you know, one of the first things um, in the session of the, of, the, of the new year, Republicans and Democrats came together to support legislation to make it easier for breast cancer screening. Right? Awesome. And nobody talks about that. Awesome. That was like one of the first things they're like, we're going to yep. get this done. Yep. It's a win for everybody. It's a win for, and there's Mm -hmm. so many stories like that where them saying, nope, this is a good idea. We're going to come together. We're going to fix it. We're going to get it done. And we just need to tell more of that and focus more on that. Yeah, well, I think the media, the me- it doesn't sell. It doesn't, it doesn't sell. It <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make sell, TV. doesn't get right? you worked up, doesn't get your blood pressure going, you know, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. But and, and I think everyone has these ideas that it's like, you know, House of Cards yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever. And that's really not what it's like. Yeah. You know, these are very... For the most part, right? Very smart people. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always some exception. And don't you think they're all there to do? They all think, whether, no matter what side you're on, you feel your ideas are what's best for the American people and for the people in, that you represent. Nobody really wants things to go wrong. Right. So it's one of those things that I just think it's just we all have a different opinion on how to get to a certain certain place. Yeah, and I, I think, look, for the, for the most part, and there are definitely people there that should not be there that are yeah. selfish and, and absolutely in it for the wrong reasons, just like in every business. Yeah. But I think on the whole, on the majority, um, people wake up and say, what's the best thing I can do to help our community, yeah. our country? And, you know, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly who's who and, and yep. they show the right reasons. They and, show who they are. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank you for coming out. We're actually already at time, which is wow. amazing. That went quick. It was fast. Really was quick. Fun. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for coming out. Thanks for answering my questions. Yeah. Um, and uh, will you come back? Absolutely. When you have other things to talk about, other things that you want to, oh, you're getting so into. There's so there's much. So much. I know there is. You gave me all kinds of things, but the show's only about 18 to 19 minutes, so we got to get going. So, but thank you so much for coming out here. It's Jack Gombach. You're with uh, McNeese Strategic Solutions Group, MSSG. And if they would want to get in touch with you, if they have questions about what you do, how would we get in touch with you? Uh, LinkedIn, email. Okay. Uh, just go to the MSSG website. All of our contact information is there. Get a better feel for, for who we are. Yeah, because you're on Facebook. You're everywhere. Oh, we're everywhere. You're everywhere. Just Absolutely. stop me on the street, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's everywhere. He really is. He's like Just like Michael Pake was. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, there you have it. Some government affairs uh, stuff there. That was actually fun. I think I stuck him on a couple things there. Some questions you weren't ready for, but that's all right. All right, that's about it. We'll see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. Thanks for listening. Are your kitchen and bathroom remodels a little overdue? Well, now's your chance to call First Response Contracting. John Sellers will take care of you. 484-256-7136. They do residential and commercial, and they're licensed and insured. Give them a call at 484-256-7136.